Hi there everybody, this is Steve the British Railroader and today I am making what has been my most requested video. I think I've had a whole three requests to do a video on what I'm about to do. So I thought it's about time that I let my fan base have what they wanted. So today we're going to fit working ditch lights to a locomotive. Now some of my English viewers may be saying, well Steve what the hell is a ditch light? So let me just very quickly explain. OK, so ditch lights are found on North American locomotives. They're sometimes known as auxiliary lights or crossing lights. And they're additional lights that you find um, normally on the pilot, uh, mostly at front of the locomotive, but also sometimes on the rear of a locomotive. And they're positioned closer to the track than normal headlights. They're basically there to make trains easier to spot for safety. Many ditch lights are also designed to flash, especially um, on passenger trains when the train sounds its horn, for example, to give additional visibility. They were introduced in North America by Canadian National back in the 60s, and by the 70s, Transport Canada had made them mandatory, and the US followed suit in December 1997. Basically, if anything goes over a crossing at more than 20 miles an hour, it needs to have ditch lights. So now that we've got the technical part all dealt with, let's go down to the workbench and let's fit them. OK, down here on the workbench, um, we have my model. Um, GP38 that I got for Christmas. Um, you can see lots of wires coming out the bottom. That's the headlights and rear lights that have all been wired up. Wanted to get that done before I moved on to the ditch lights. Now, as I explained earlier, the ditch lights are 3D printed um, items from CMR Products, um, whose website address I will put below. Um, they're just plain round pilot mounted ones um that go flat on the pilot which we're using for the rear um here i've only got one on here but um i have got enough these are um the ones that sit on top of the pilot and they're going to be used at the front just to show you the different examples um these ones are ones that are used um i think by norfolk southern railroad and as you can see they've got additional parts on them which i think are some of the electrical connections on the train but these are just plain plastic, 3D pl printed plastic mouldings um, that I have bought. You can make your own. Um, one thing that I've done is made my own using bits of, um, this is Evergreen number 224 plastic tubing. And basically what you do is you take a little slice off the end of the tube. That's a few millimeters thick. That gives you your basic I show you here, this is one of the model ones, but as you can see, whoops, almost lost it. That's almost just a, oh, can't even do it. Keeps falling. That's just like a piece of plastic tubing. So you can cut these, paint them and use those. You can even mount, even mount them on flat bits of plastic to do the ones that are mounted on top of the pilot and not just against them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the rear. So down here, I just, as you can see just here, we have one of the headlight lenses. Now I simply painted it whilst it was on. So whilst it was like that, I painted it on the sprue. So I've just painted it a gunmetal color and then taking it off of the sprue. And all you have to then do at this stage is glue it in position on the locomotive. So let's zoom out again. And literally, if you look on the locomotive, just here is one I did earlier, and that's literally just with a dab of super glue, 
put into position. So I'm just going to very quickly put the other one in position and then I'll show you how to fit the LEDs. OK, so number two is glued on now and you can see they're just sitting there. And I can remember when I first started fitting ditch lights, I thought, oh, well, we can just have them as dummies. But no, I can't possibly do that. So what we're going to now do is drill a hole. And we're going to take our drill with, that's a 0.4 millimeter drill bit. And we're going to drill just through the center of the light. So this is a hollow casting. And we're going to drill through the pilot beam to the chassis underneath. So once I've done that, we'll then fit the LED. Okay, so the LEDs that I'm using, I am, I believe they're called 0402 is the size number. Um, they're readily available on eBay. They're micro LEDs and they're pre-wired. And these ones are warm white. And they basically, um, they come pre-wired with a resistor. However, you do have to chop the resistor off if you want to stand any chance of threading it through a 0.4 millimeter hole. And you literally, as you can see here, they just thread in and the LED just pulls in and sits in there. And what I'm going to do is very quickly just test to see if that LED is working. Okay, so using my homemade LED tester as shown in the last video that's working um, and then the next thing is going to be securing that in place but I don't do that until everything is fitted and working and I'll show you how to do that later in the video so we'll do the other one and then we'll move to the front ditch lights okay moving to the front ditch lights. So as you can see, these mouldings, first thing I did was painted the front. So that's painting the flat back at the back, which I painted green to go with the locomotive. And then the outer casing I painted um, silver. Now these come off of the backing quite easily. And you are left with your little moulding like that. There will be some on the back, some rough bits. So it's best to get a file, which of course I don't have to hand. Oh, there it is. So you get your file and just smooth the back of it like so. And I'm just going to place that down there. get our drill and again a 4.4 millimeter hole through it this one's quite simple so we get your LED and just like the other one We just thread the wires through, like so, Oops. and pull that tight in. So the LED is actually sitting in there. Now with this one, we are going to secure it. So we're going to bend the wires down at the back to go to the foot of this. Now, I don't know if you can see, I'm going to just make this a bit bigger. Sorry if it's a bit blurry, but if you can just see the profile, there is a definite bottom to that where it will sit on the surface of the pilot. And what we're going to do, if I turn that over and get that back into focus, just bear with me. And oops, no, not quite. Hang on. There we go. So I'm going to glue those wires in that position against the back of this. And then we're going to paint over them. 
And just over there is one that I prepared earlier. So we'll get that and show it to you. So here's the one I prepared earlier. And if I turn this over, you can see the wires are on there and they're painted green. So what we're going to do is we're going to mount this on the Loco Pilot, if I just bring that out. So getting lots of wires tangled up here, but there we go. So on this, this goes just here. So we're going to drill a hole down through the chassis. So it needs to go back a little bit because you can see there's a bit that juts out here. Hole through the chassis so that I can feed the wires through. And then just with a dab of super glue, we'll fit that on top. So we'll come back once I've done that. Okay, so here we have the first of the front lights, front ditch lights fitted. So that's fitted just there. I'm going to give it a bit for the glue to dry. Once the other one um, that I worked on a little bit earlier and the glue's dried on that, I'll paint the back and I will fit that to the other side um, just here. I'm just going to have a quick word with you about wiring. You can see lots of wires coming out of there. This is a DCC project. So here's my chassis. Let me just move the speakers for the moment and actually get it in shot would help. So here is my chassis. I'm using a Soundtracks PMP8 um, decoder, which is just my preferred type. And as you can see, it's already wired in um, for running and also for sound. Now, the lights, this terminal here and this terminal here are the negative outputs for the front and rear headlights. As you can see, I've got resistors wired in here and here. So these are the common positive returns for your um, lights and any other functions that you want to put on. So with the um, headlights, it's fairly straightforward. For the tail lights and the ditch lights, we have to use the functions. And here you've got the FX3, FX4, FX5, FX6, FX7, and FX8. And we're going to be using four of those. Um, one each for the ditch lights. Now, just a word on the ditch lights. Um, on this particular model, the dish lights don't flash. This railroad doesn't use flashing dish lights. And for that reason, the front dish lights can be wired together as one function and the rear ditch lights can be wired together as a second function. So they will take up one of these. So the negative for both of those goes there. I will actually wire them in series so that the positive lead of one connects to the negative lead of another of the next one. And so therefore you're then left with one positive and one negative one to go, the positive to go here, the negative to go there. Same with the rear lights and the back ditch lights and the back rear lights so that, that they can all be wired on separate functions and therefore can be controlled individually. Okay, so the lights have now all been fitted. I just show you the front of the loco here. You can see the ditch lights in place and same at the rear. They've all got their LEDs in place. They're working, they've been wired up. I'm sorry I didn't show you me doing the wiring, but there are some things in life that life's too short for. So what we want to do is just finally put some lenses on these ditch lights. And the way that I do that is with this stuff, it's called glue and glaze. It's for making windows. Um, I believe there is a version of this available in the States though. I'm afraid I don't know what the name is. I think it's called Crystal Clear. Um, but um, I may be mistaken, but I'm sure you guys can find out. And literally what you do is you get a cocktail stick, as we call it in the UK, or a toothpick, I think you call it in America. Pick some up. And basically flood the aperture. As you can see, it's gone white. And do the same with the other one. And there you go. Leave that alone for about half an hour. That will go clear. And when it's done, we will give it a run and show you all the lights 
in action. Okay, so here's the loco on the layout. We're just going to start her up. Put the headlights on. And then the front ditch lights. As you can hear, all of the sounds now work. This is a Soundtracks decoder, um, a PMP8 that's gone into this. Now, if I turn off the ditch lights at this end, change the direction of the loco, and then turn on the rear lights. No. Nope. What am I turning on? I know. Okay, what I've done is completely the wrong thing. So <laughs> here we go. I am going to turn on the rear lights. There we go. So they're independently controlled. So they come on only when I want them on because actually the real engine won't use them all the time if it's in a consist it'll only use them if it's at the rear of an engine of a train or if it's running light loco so they can come off we can change the direction so the headlights on at the top ditch lights on As you can see, these dish lights don't flash, which is prototypical for this railroad. And away she goes. Just a few more details to add and she'll be done. And that will be the subject of another video. So that's how I fit ditch lights to my HO scale um, American locomotives. I hope that you found this video useful. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. Um, please feel free to subscribe. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below and I will do my very best to answer them. But thank you for watching. Um, my name's Steve, I'm the British Railroader and I'm saying farewell to you for now from my railway room. Bye-bye.